If I were diagnosed with heart disease today, these are the three supplements I would start taking tomorrow. And no, cholesterol lowering is not part of this discussion. Hi, my name's Samir and I'm a heart health coach. I help my clients reverse and prevent heart disease by focusing on first principles. In one of my earlier videos, I talked about the six things I would do if I were diagnosed with heart disease. Supplementation was number five on that list. So for me, it's not, it's not the first thing I would do, but it can still be super important. Now, when it comes to supplementation, there's a couple of things to consider. Um, number one always is the safety signature. By the way, this is not medical advice. This is just what I would do. Obviously make medical decisions with your medical team, including your licensed functional medical practitioner. So for me, the first thing is really the safety signature. So all the things I'm going to tell you have very good safety signatures. They're not dangerous for most people. And number two is, can we get these minerals or vitamins, can we get them from food rather than uh, from a supplement? Now, in some cases, the dosage that we may need, especially if we were diagnosed with heart disease, would be higher than what we can get from food. So in that case, supplementation may make sense. But always my instinct is going to be, can we find a whole food form rather than a supplement? So the first one is really, this is sort of a twofer. This is a combination of vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. Uh, you may have heard of vitamin D. It helps with bones. It helps with the immune system. But by itself, interestingly, vitamin D has not been shown to be super effective for um, AS ASCVD, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, heart disease, right? Um, but the interesting thing is when you pair it with vitamin K2, suddenly the signal is a little bit different. It seems to actually have an effect. So the thinking is that vitamin three helps our body absorb calcium and vitamin K2 is gonna make sure that the calcium actually gets to where it's supposed to go, gets to the bones rather than getting stuck in the arteries. So we see some cases with people, especially women who've been supplementing calcium, sometimes that can lead to um, clogging of the arteries and so on. So D3, K2, that seems to be a useful combination um, for many people. Now, in terms of the dosage, Messages. Again, this is going to vary, and I would definitely get a blood test to know my D, my vitamin D status before I supplemented. But let's say I was low. If I was low, I'd be looking at at least 5,000 international units, maybe 10,000 international units per day. For vitamin K2, I think the recommended dose is somewhere in the 100 to 200 mcg, that's microgram range. Um, and I think there's a preferred form of vitamin K, which is the NK7 form. Uh, again, you can get some of this from fish, from food. Um, actually, cheese has a lot of vitamin K. Also, fish, egg yolks, liver, fermented foods like natto these are all good sources of d3 but the doses in food can be too low to make a difference if you're if you know that you currently have heart disease so that's why i would supplement if i did the second supplement i would recommend is omega-3 fatty acids so this is epa and dha these are the healthy fats that are found in fatty fish these fats help lower inflammation in the body they support healthy blood vessels and reduce the stickiness of the blood which can prevent clotting uh, the data here is a bit mixed, but I suspect these oils mostly derived from fatty fish might be beneficial, especially when they're not oxidized. So what that means is we need a very good quality fish oil. We need something that's actually, you can look online, you can find the different brands have different ratings and you can figure out what's, what's a good quality. And also we probably need to keep these in the fridge so that they oxidize slowly, right? Um, if you can find a, a clean and trustworthy brand, uh, that's great. If not, you might consider increasing the amount of omega-3s you're getting from food. The best food sources for omega-3s are those fatty fish. So we're looking at sardines, salmon, mackerel, anchovies. I'd aim for three to five servings uh, of fish per week. Probably I'd do that anyway, in addition to supplementing with the omega-3s. Um, but you want to you do both. You want to get it from food and probably you want to supplement a little bit too, if you know that you're at risk for heart disease. The third supplement I would be taking if I were uh, diagnosed with heart disease is berberin. Now berberin is a natural compound that's found in certain plants, including tree turmeric. In fact, the scientific name of tree turmeric is something like berberis or something. So berberin gets its name from tree turmeric. Uh, it's been used in traditional medicine for centuries, but there's a lot of research behind it. In fact, I would say of all the supplements, berberin is the one with probably the best uh, data behind it. It's been shown to lower blood sugar. It reduces insulin resistance. It helps to manage the appetite so you don't get hungry when you're taking berberin. It may even lower inflammation. Now, berberin is going to work uh, in tandem with some of the other things we've discussed on this list, like cutting carbs and intermittent fasting. The dose we recommend is 500 mg once or twice a day taken with meals. Some people might get a bit of stomach upset from it. So you start slow, start at the lower dosage and then work your way up. So those are the three supplements we're looking at. So D3, K2, number one, uh, omega-3 is number two, and bourbon number three. But I just want to be clear that these are not really a cure. Supplements are not going to fix the root causes of heart disease, but they are part of the toolkit, right? 
we have a million tools in our toolkit and we pull them out when we need them. In other words, they can provide a layer of extra support in addition to the lifestyle change changes we've discussed, which include cutting carbs, fasting, sun exposure, and sauna. Uh, if you skip the basics, there's no pill that's really gonna help you. And I know that it's hard to figure all this out on your own. So if you're tired of guessing, trying to piece things together on your own based on the internet, uh, I actually have a free webinar which goes through a lot of these teachings in, in detail. Uh, the link is in the description. So again, those are the three things I'd be taking, three supplements I'd be taking, D3K2, Omega-3s, and Berberin. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.